Honest Buildings um, is, is all about really commercial property and the whole world of, of real estate. Uh, it connects owners, service providers, and tenants so that they can actually do business more efficiently than ever before. Um, the, the way we look at, at the world um, at Honest Buildings is, is obviously quite a building-centric one. And when you look at any given city around the world, um, there are a lot of problems going on in those cities, um, and, and also a whole lot of opportunities. Um, cities represent one of the most fragmented markets in the world, where um, effectively they're, they're sort of completely offline and, and completely online all at once. There's infrastructure running in and, and out of these things, information moving around all the time, but it's very hard to get your hands on all that information in one place, especially when it comes to buildings. Um, and when it comes to the world of commercial property, um, and you look at a market like the US, uh, the whole real estate market makes up almost 15% of US GDP when you add up all the commissions that come out of leasing deals, sales deals, all the construction that goes on in the market, the architecture jobs that are put together to actually build the buildings that you see. Uh, the number is slightly lower in the UK, but it's still over 10% of UK GDP goes towards the whole property market, building of buildings, designing of buildings, and all that. Um, so it's a little bit crazy when you think about the fact that if you actually want to learn anything about the transactions that are going on in or around buildings, it's, it's very difficult, very expensive, and, and oftentimes pretty much impossible to do. So, what would happen if all cities were actually networked and, and interlinked? Um, what if owners of buildings could actually figure out what sorts of service providers were, were the best ones to hire without having to sit through endless pitches from them? What if on the flip side, service providers could actually highlight their existing track record so they could get in front of qualified buyers or you know, actual owners who really need their services? What if property agents and brokers could actually compare buildings more efficiently than, than they can at the moment? And what if people that actually use buildings, tenants, businesses like Ford here, using this space, you know, what if companies like that could actually find the space that they need based on their actual needs more efficiently? It's also a problem for, for governments. Uh, when you look at things like the, the refit program in London, um, or the Green Deal that's happening here, or the PACE program in the US, governments all around the world are, are trying to figure out ways to incentivize upgrading buildings to help, you know, help, help markets and, and economies recover, but it's very hard to actually help make those examples relevant for the private sector so they can sort of copy and replicate those. That's where we think Honest Buildings is actually coming in to, to bring real estate into the future. How does that actually happen? Um, this is what the, the Honest Buildings network sort of looks like um, around an actual asset. Um, something like the Empire State Building is up on the system already. And all these different sort of groups involved in the supply chain of the world of real estate have a different value proposition on Honest Buildings. Um, but it's all about showcasing your work, showcasing your portfolio, and be able to find others who, who do what you need more quickly and efficiently than, than ever before. Um, the easiest way to think about what Honest Buildings is really like is it's sort of like LinkedIn, sort of like Facebook. There are multiple different types of profiles you can have. Um, you're all extremely familiar with this kind of model. Um, and I think the, the, the unique thing to remember about Honest Buildings is really the, that everything sort of revolves around a building profile. And we've actually created a building profile for every building with an address around the world. Um, each of these building profiles can host a bunch of different information, connections, and other profile types. So there's a building profile, there are individual profiles, there are project profiles, and there are company profiles. So an individual can deliver a project working for a company, and that project will sort of sit linked to that actual building. So hypothetically, as we continue to build this market, if all the lighting contractors in London have all of their lighting jobs up, as an owner or a developer, you could actually search for LED lighting projects between 150 and 200,000 square feet, and for the first time ever, actually see all the companies that actually have delivered work for that type of asset, potentially in a specific period of time, which is 
a pretty unique thing for, for property. I mean, right now, the way it really happens is your buddies know some really good people, um, you knew someone else before, you have a list of approved suppliers that hasn't changed in years, um, and that, that, on top of maybe just a Google search, is about as advanced as it gets right now. And we just think it's time for that market to kind of change and, and, and move on in advance. Um, and so by creating this sort of marketplace for, for goods and services in, in the commercial real estate space, we're fostering connections that actually lead to transactions. And by helping people transact more quickly in property, we think we can actually help buildings improve in our cities around the world faster than ever before. So this is just a quick dive through of, of the system and what it looks like. Um, if you type in London into the search bar at the top, um, you know, the system auto-populates with the city. Um, you can then dive in deeper. You can see um, assets uh, represented by these blue dots. Um, these square footage numbers are, are getting changed. We actually have our UK market launch this Wednesday, so in two days' time. It's really exciting. Um, we're going to have more buildings than this up. Um, and as you click on one of these dots, um, you actually get what is effectively a miniature website built around this building. Um, this is becoming really, really important, especially in a market like US, where we have aggregated a huge amount of publicly available data, something we're still working on in the UK very hard. Um, as these building profiles get more and more data layered into them, and more and more people sort of wiki style are adding projects to these building profiles, what ends up happening is Google recognizes that it's a really interesting um, profile, and when you Google search for an address for your average building in the US that doesn't have a social media profile, which is pretty much everyone, um, you end up actually coming up with the Honest Buildings profile as, as the number one search result on Google, which is really interesting and, and great for anyone involved in that actual asset, whether you're a tenant, whether you're a service provider that's done a project on it, or whether you're the owner. Um, on every one of the building profiles, there's, there's a whole lot of um, information you can find. Um, the two things we like to draw people's attention to are really the fact that you can show off um, that there's an actual leasing opportunity on a building, which is obviously hugely important for the sort of financial people in real estate to be able to help drive actual value to their property through leasing them more quickly. Um, then the other element, which is sort of the one that we're obviously kind of focused on, which is really unique in the market, is this element about projects. Um, a building can have an infinite number of projects actually attached to it. And when you click on a project, what you get is now sort of a miniature website built around what's effectively a case study that's happened on a building. Um, companies can attach their own marketing collateral, um, which has all of their own branding, which sort of sorts out your issues with with uh, the marketing teams of a lot of these companies that ask about why should we be duplicating our effort. The reason is you can still keep your own brand, you can attach your own collateral, but by sharing your information with us um, on this open platform, now your project is actually globally searchable on a website that's getting optimized and invested in so that actually someone may actually find your project where before the only way to find a project is to go to your company's website, figure out where the case study section is, and actually download the case study, um, which doesn't really happen all that often. Um, there's all sorts of things going on with verification. I won't sort of bore you with that, but if people have questions on it, happy to talk you through it. This is just where some of that information can be almost copy and pasted from the company's case study, but, but put into this sort of environment, this open, honest buildings website where it can actually be found. This is... Um, sort of the core value proposition that we're, we're focusing on as a company, which is that it is hugely time and resource intensive as a decision maker in property to actually run a project on your building. Whether it's hiring an architect, doing a construction job, getting someone in to come and monitor the energy, it's, it's still a very difficult process. It's very hard to find where the information lies to see who can actually do the job well. Um, and you also have to sit through a bunch of meetings with people. Many of them might be completely irrelevant for what you're doing. Uh, on the flip side, the sort of exact same thing is going on, where all those companies are spending every breathing moment of their lives pitching every possible owner they can, um, trying to sell every single service they've got, um, and, and mostly with a very low rate of success. I, I know because I spent six, seven years of my life doing that as a 
commercial real estate broker in DC and then leading sustainability in a big property um, agency in the UK. Um, I sort of got it both directions, especially on the sustainability side, people coming in pitching me to get into our company's sort of portfolio of managed properties all the time with great, amazing products, whether it was insulation or, or whatever, um, and I would just have to have them send me a PDF, store it in my file, wouldn't have a job for them at the time, and it would just sit there. Um, and then also me going and pitching other people in my job, you know, it was never the right time, they weren't a qualified buyer, it wasn't quite the right type of asset for the sustainability solution we were talking about. It's just very difficult to qualify what people need, when they need it, and on the flip side, who are the best people to use. So that's the sort of space we're really trying to focus on as a company and the element of our business that we're really looking to scale, um, especially in these next coming months and in this next year. So um, kind of just fly through these. Um, this presentation is usually for more um, of like a pure sort of service provider audience. Um, but people can come on and sign up today and create a profile for free. Um, you can put up information about your company, case studies you've um, created, you know, groups you've worked with before, all that sort of stuff. Um, then we're actually running project opportunities through the system, so we're actively working with decision makers, large asset managers, developers, um, other types of owners, large tenants, um, working with them to find out what their pain points are, what kind of projects they need to run, and then we'll run a request through the Honest Buildings Network and get people to come on and load up case studies of their own um, so that they can be sort of ranked and weighed against each other so that the decision maker can figure out who the most relevant person is for that job. Um, we've done this a bunch of times. Um, we, the first sort of case study for us was a, 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 an owner of a mid-sized office building in New York. It was about 50,000 square feet. Um, and the guy needed to find an architect to basically reposition the retail unit at the bottom of the building. Um, wasn't getting the rent out of it that he wanted and, and, and just really wanted to see a bump in what was going on with his property. Um, he knew a bunch of architects, as, as most people sort of do, but uh, when we went and talked to him, we sort of figured out that it was a listed building. Um, there were all sorts of additional elements that, that sort of made it a more niche project and, and ultimately we ended up uh, helping him run the project. We sent it out to the, to the market and 80 architects responded all put case studies on the website. Um, we ended up shortlisting a group of 10 architects with the owner. He ended up meeting with five, um, has ongoing relationships with three, hired one, um, and that one architect that was hired is now sort of paying some additional fees for additional features on the system, um, and the other two architects are sort of set to be doing that too. So that's sort of um, the, the freemium model that, that we also run is running out opportunities to these people, and as they see they're getting exposure, they're actually getting work, there's all sorts of other opportunities for them to um, get more exposure, and sometimes for certain elements that we, we have to charge them so that we don't, um, you know, so that we actually make some money. Um, you know, we've done this with larger historic properties, um, and we've even done this with uh, some of the biggest groups in the world. Uh, we were working with one of the largest developer and construction um, companies in New York who were looking at a, an owner-occupied portfolio of 24 very large buildings in New York um, and uh, because of their client um, they needed to find 50% carbon savings in retrofitting these 24 buildings. Um, clearly this company you know, is sort of one of the world's monsters. They have all the resources and money in the world to actually find the best people to do this um, but it, it's just a real sort of time sink and a time drain. Um, so in discussions with them, we, we ended up taking their requirement to the market and figuring out who the most relevant sort of engineering type groups were out there in a fraction of the time that it would have taken them. So that's really it for the, the presentation. Um, you know, if any of you guys want to build a profile, it'd be great, um, especially in the next day before our launch in the UK and let me know any issues you come across. Uh, hopefully not. Um, <coughs> But uh, yeah, happy to take some questions and, and, and chat to people. I can also just flip open the website and actually show you what this looks like um, in action. Uh, so one thing we might do from here is take questions in groups of three. Hi. Uh, okay, so guys, do we have any questions from here at all? Anyone at all? So we've got uh, one from uh, Paul here. Uh, sorry, is it Michael, Michael Sullivan, one of our speakers? And uh, then... 
uh, Ed. Uh, so I'm just I'm reading, read, read, reading the badges on, on here. Okay, so uh, Paul, if you just put your question first. I'll take all, all the questions and then we'll um, hand the stage back to okay, new, actually. Just about the timing. Like, there doesn't seem to be much in the UK at the moment, so I'm wondering on your side. So I'm wondering when, uh, when that's coming. So the question is, when is this... Uh, when is then the data coming on? Yeah, when, when, when are they giving enough buildings on there to make it useful to search anything? Oh, okay, so you want to know about when you get a search. Okay, so that's the first question. And then, Michael, your question at the back. Uh, is it, I, lo I love the name, uh, Honest Buildings. Is, um, can you tell us a, a little bit about that and the honesty bit and the sustainability bit? Because you, you mentioned sustainability once or twice, and I wondered if there's, that's where the name came from, or there's a particular sustainable, honest event. Okay, uh, Nick, you've got that one there. So the question is about the honest building in the background yeah. and sustainability there. And uh, then, Ed, uh, you, Ed, could I have a question from you as well, please? Yeah. Um, I wondered if you could talk a bit more about the freemium model. So what kind of features um, are going to be paid for and by whom? How you sort of work that out and, and whether that will change over time? And uh, I'm just going to sneak one in as kind of like an organizer prerogative here. Uh, there's one thing that Nick mentioned earlier on about uh, basically the basically tracking how green pretty much every single building was using the energy savings ratings for all the buildings. You mentioned that to me before. If you could speak about that, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, Nick, I'm happy to pass, the, the, pass it back to you now that you've got an idea of what the questions are. Okay. I'll combine your question, Chris, with that first question um, about when, when there will be sort of additional information that, that you know, enhances the whole system. Um, on Wednesday, we will be releasing a lot more information than you just saw in the slides. Um, we're going to be releasing a couple of data sets that have never been shared publicly uh, before. Um, <clears throat> we're working on things like getting the entire energy performance certificate database for non-commercial buildings attached and linked into the building profiles. It's a, it's a long, sort of hard journey, I would say. But that's part of the reason we, we feel really lucky and sort of blessed to be working on the Open Data Institute, um, who we're working with very closely to look at as many large data sets on, on the built environment as we can. Um, you know, in, in the US, it, it's, I'm not gonna say it was easy, because it wasn't, it, it was very, very difficult. But there are data sets that are public that were easier to access. So when we launched in New York, we released information on 250,000 commercial buildings. Um, a, a, a lot of that information came from the property tax database, which is open. Um, the way tax is levied on buildings in the US is actually on the sort of asset level itself, whereas the way tax is levied in, in a sort of roundabout way on, on buildings in the UK is actually business rates. So it's actually on tenants and occupiers and businesses and the square footage that, that their actual space encompasses, it's a much sort of larger and more complex data set and one we're really interested in, in getting into because it's every square foot of every building in the whole country. But when you actually look into things like how many office buildings there are in the UK, it's kind of unbelievable, but actually no one can actually look you straight in the eye and tell you an actual number. Um, the the non-domestic market is, is actually very, very opaque. Um, not very, very first European standards, but first maybe US standards, it, it's a bit more opaque um, in the UK. So as the system builds, as we continue running projects, as people keep adding projects onto buildings, sort of more data just begins to sort of well up. Um, so we've got just over sort of 100 companies on board now, um, sort of tens of thousands of buildings rather than the hundreds of thousands we would like. Um, and, and that's all just going to keep building. Um, and we hope that the sort of UK launch um, Wednesday really helps to sort of open it up, let people know that we're here, and hopefully some things will start happening here like they've done in the US where people start saying, this is really interesting. Here's some data we have. Can we put it into your system? Um, that's what we'd love. Um, the next question about um, the name, Honest Buildings. Um, our, our CEO and founder and, and the guy who came up with, with the whole concept of this company um, was also sort of sort of like me, a, a real estate guy his entire career, started off in um, the sort of investment banking side of the business, then became an asset manager, and because of his own personal passion, then went into the sustainability side of the business. Um, and I think, you know, for, for both of us, the, the transition was, was an interesting one, coming from just trying to do deals and property to then eventually trying to do sustainability 
with buildings, with deal makers, and figuring out how to put that whole piece together. Um, and and one, of the, one of the things that I think the name really refers to is the fact that when you're looking at buildings and you're looking at assets, you really just have no freaking idea what's going on when you start. If you're buying a building, if you're looking to develop a building, I mean, every single company, no matter how big or how small, it's like starting with a blank slate every single time. And it just doesn't make sense when you've got these giant things that we all sit in every single day, look at every single day, that when you go to buy one or fix one or change one or sell one, that you have to start from scratch every day. So, you know, Honest Buildings is about a lot of things, but it's, it's a lot about sharing information that doesn't need to be private anymore. Like, why should the name of the architect who built this building be a secret? Why shouldn't we know what sort of material was used for that column? Um, you know, there's a lot of things that have just, over the years, been kept sort of secret, whether it was on purpose or not, that, that we think could be brought out and made transparent. And by sharing that information, we actually think it could help everyone do better stuff uh, more quickly. And the final question. Um, about the freemium model. So I'll just make it sort of simple. I'll show you that a couple of things we're actually doing as a business. Um, things have sort of evolved. Um, and, and this is now really where our, our, our system sits, is that these are the three sort of products that we actually offer as a business. Um, it's called HP Match, HP Portfolio, and HP Platform. Um, what sits above and around everything is, is the HP network. So you can come on and join for free. You can do a lot of stuff on here, connecting with people, messaging people, um, learning, researching, whatever you want, really. Um, all of that is sort of free. But then when it comes to actually running a project for a decision maker, that's part of where we're starting to monetize the business. Um, so we'll work with a decision maker. The first match is always free, no matter how big or small the company is. Um, and then after we do sort of multiple matches, what we do is we take a small sort of um, deposit, really, from a decision maker, literally in the thousands of dollars or thousands of pounds range, just to make sure that as we go out and do all this research, aggregating the best service providers in the market and getting their case studies on board and then analyzing like who's more relevant, um, that we at least get sort of paid for that time. Um, and then if these, the decision maker ends up choosing one of those service providers to actually do a project, we take a small commission of that project. Um, and that's on a sort of sliding scale to make sure that once we go over this sort of million pound realm, we're not taking a huge chunk. Um, so that, that's sort of where, I guess, the main monetization model is. Uh, then there's this uh, element called the HB portfolio which is uh, sort of addressing a, a different pain point I haven't really hit on um, talking yet, which is that for most companies, uh, whether you're a, a mid-sized architect or engineer or contractor or what have you, um, keeping your website up to date is, is a pain point. Um, and dealing with case studies is also a pain point. So what we're going to do for companies like that is sort of Behance style, if you know Behance, um, it's basically a, a company that started an online network for artists. And you can put up your pro portfolio of work, um, and then for a fee, you can basically pump that portfolio out to your own URL. So we're going to do that for you know architects, contractors, service providers, even, even owners who want to keep their portfolio of work, their sort of case study or their <coughs> portfolio section up to date. Um, and then there's, at, at, at the sort of higher level, it's called HP Platform, where we're actually selling um, almost like a, a sort of white label version of the Honest Buildings um, ecosystem itself to very large enterprises and governments. Um, we've done that for New York State and their energy efficiency program, as well as Connecticut um, in the US for their PACE program, which is loosely the equivalent of the Green Deal in the UK. Um, and so hopefully um, we'll get to do some platform deals with cities, councils, or potentially, you know, Department of uh, Energy and Climate Change, um, you know, for something like the Green Deal. We, we would love to do that because we actually think we have a technology that can help enable and, and actually drive demand for these initiatives that they're trying to run. Okay, cool. Thanks, Nick. Uh, just to do another round of questions if anyone has me. So I'm just seeing... Sorry, Nick. That's fine. Just uh, one more question here and then... And then I think we could probably go for a few beers, actually. Quick break, and then come back for the lightning talks, actually. Okay, um, Jason, Jason, question for you. Uh, 
yeah, how, how important is energy efficiency to people? Uh, people renting or, or buying a building is that like one of the key decisions, uh, key sort of influences for, for, for them, or where does it sit? Uh, where would it rank in, in, in the decision making process on, uh, on your on your site? Okay, so that's just uh, the one the, and from Jack just to. Okay, we've got one and three. Uh, three, we've got some more left, and then and then I'll have no promise there after that, okay, guys? Okay, so Jack, yourself? Um, okay, so how do you incentivize keeping, for the, for the wiki aspect, how do you incentivize that, and how do you ensure reliability of what the content is produced? So one of the questions about keeping the data quality, and Conan, yourself? Uh, I wanted to ask about um, larger scale engagement with the site, so I might not want to hire an architect, <coughs> Okay, so I need to paraphr so paraphrase this. How do you tell someone to recommend it to someone else? How do you use it to research the cost of the market rather than just who's available? Okay, right. Okay, Nick, do you have those ones? Yeah. Okay, right, then after that, um, it's time for some more free beer, everyone. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of where energy efficiency sits um, in, in a scale of importance, I think you hear you know, varied answers depending on what market you're in. I think generally in, in a market like the US or the UK, you know, I, I used to be a tenant rep broker, so it's definitely not one of the first three or four things you typically talk to a tenant about. Um, increasingly, that, that is actually changing because operational costs are becoming so expensive with the cost of fuel rising that if you're trying to take a long-term lease, um, your operational costs can eventually be a very, very large chunk of, of your overall sort of budget. Um, that combined with things like the Energy Act of 2011, which says, or at least potentially stipulates, it's going to be illegal to let properties in the UK with an EPC of an F or a G in 2018, um, it, it's really raising awareness in a big way. So the major asset managers who own a lot of buildings are all running analyses on their property portfolios saying, okay, if I've got an F or a G, what does that risk actually mean to us? Um, and if it is so great that the cost to upgrade it actually outweighs sort of holding on to it, um, they're starting to sell properties right now. Um, that, that's sort of quietly going on. Um, you know, there's still sort of almost six years left before that happens. Um, but, but everyone is sort of waking up to it all over the world, and it is definitely increasingly becoming more important. Um, part of the role we want to play in this whole space is to take um, some of the coolest and best things going on in the market and give them a place to actually be seen and be found so that they can actually scale. Um, sort of my own personal view on the whole sustainability and energy efficiency space, which is one I was and have been involved in for a while, is that um, the market on the service provider side has seemed to really almost grow and blossom and explode while the demand for all those services and technologies really hasn't changed a huge amount. Um, and, and people are having a real difficult time making buying decisions because they simply don't know who else has used it before. And for a big owner or a big asset manager, um, even if a technology is proven, um, if you can't just sort of see and, and taste and smell where this stuff has been used before, um, it's inherently a risky decision, even if it's really, really cheap. Um, and so, you know, a big, a big part of what Honest Buildings is doing is, is trying to be um, almost like a, a petri dish that, that enables all these technologies and services to sort of flow around and, and, and connect to the different things and the different people they've, they've touched and, and allow it to actually get some visibility so that it actually can get scale. Uh, this is a, a, a small example of that. Um, Lucid is a, is a startup in the US that does real-time energy monitoring. They have a product called a building dashboard. Um, and we worked with them um, to basically integrate that building dashboard into the Honest Building site. And you can see that they've actually attached this building dashboard to um, almost 1,300 pretty chunky commercial buildings across the US. And when you click on any of these buildings, uh, what you actually get 
is the building profile, the Honest Buildings Buildings profile, um, plus a little area for a building dashboard, um, where when you actually click this building dashboard, we hyperlink people out of Honest Buildings and to the Lutron, I mean Lucid um, website that actually is going to now display the real-time energy usage of that actual asset. Um, this is sort of a microcosmic example of, of some really interesting things that are that are going on. Most people in the real estate world, when they see that, say, oh my god, I cannot believe this owner is willing to show off publicly the real-time energy performance of their building. Um, this <laughs> one, I guess he doesn't mind too much. <laughs> not sure why that's happened. Um, but where we'd like to be as we continue to invest in, and build out our own product is that building dashboard one day won't be a link necessarily that goes outside of the website, but instead could maybe be a widget that actually shows it off directly on that building profile, potentially with you know all sorts of other really interesting information so that people at a first glance can get a sense of this stuff so that one day when a tenant has a choice between a less efficient building and a more efficient building, costs are the same, location is generally the same, amenities are generally the same, um, you know, most people in this space believe that, that soon enough people will start making the more efficient choice, which will help continue to drive the market forward. Um, that was a very long answer, but I'm kind of passionate about that space, so thank you for that question. Um, let's see, how do you incentivize case studies? Um, with money is, is the simple answer. Um, that's why we're running these project opportunities directly through the system. Um, here is the Honest Buildings um, profile page for our own company on the website. Here's one of the recent projects we've actually ran in the UK. It's still actually ongoing. Um, this is for one of the largest commercial owners of property in the country um, who want to figure out the best companies who know how to actually meter airflow in buildings. So in this building, you can see that unit right there. It's obviously just plugged into the wall. It's probably not a central air system in this building. Um, this owner has a lot of buildings with central air systems and wants to understand as they're pumping air throughout this building to 10, 15 different tenants in the building, how can they actually measure how much air each one is using? How can they actually apportion costs directly to those tenants? Um, so that they can actually remove that service charge from their entire balance sheet, which means that when they sell the building, they may potentially get a yield on that building, a quarter percent, a half percent, maybe even a whole percent higher, which is a really big deal in financial terms for these building owners. Um, take that back to our system. These guys have a lot of difficulty identifying the best people in the market to do it. Um, they ended up Googling it, found one company in the US that looked really good, but the last thing they wanted to do was actually call this company and have these guys hounding them until, until they died. Um, so we sort of act as this interesting buffer for these decision makers to research and figure out who the best players are in the market. And the incentive is basically that this owner here wants to roll out this project to one 200 to 300,000 square foot office building with the idea that if they actually find a solution they're happy with, they're going to roll it out to a 66 plus 8 million square foot building portfolio across the UK. So that job at the end of the day would be worth millions of pounds. Um, and for a bunch of companies to come on and invest a little time putting up case studies of your work, um, where if you don't get selected, your information is still in this sort of open platform where maybe someone else with the same sort of decision could find you, it's becoming more of a compelling argument, but it is still a very, very new thing and takes a lot of work to get service providers to understand that there is actually a real opportunity at the sort of end of the proverbial rainbow. Um, but, but that's really where we're focusing on, on, on scaling our own business is driving opportunities with cash attached to them through the system to get case studies put on. Okay, just the final question was about uh, you know, accuracy. Yeah. And then just, and then, then off a bit. Cool. Um, <laughs> so, let me just choose a project here. These are actually attached to buildings, but so with any sort of wiki style 
online system, um, there is always this sort of innate fear, I guess, that, that, that some people will question how um, accurate some of that information is. And that's completely fair. Um, and, and we've put in a couple different elements into the system to try and take care of that. Um, but at a, at a much higher level, the sort of beauty of these open business to business or even just sort of general social networks, but certainly in a business to business social network environment um, like LinkedIn, um, you know, it, it's sometimes in a way, it, it just doesn't really make any sense to say something that's just completely false. Um, for the same reason I would never say, you know, I'm, I'm the Prime Minister of the UK on LinkedIn, you know, would never get invited to talk at a nice event, you'd never get into any meeting. If someone spots that on your profile, they automatically think you're a crazy person and, you know, it has ramifications. <coughs> so if you put up complete lies onto something like Honest Buildings, the idea is that people will see it, someone will flag it, we get alerted to that automatically, you'll be discredited as a company, and it may actually impact you getting hired for another job in the future. Um, that's sort of the philosophical level of, of how these sort of trust-based systems work. Um, you know, same examples happen with Amazon, with you know, eBay, with Airbnb, with, with any of those things. Um, ultimately, as they become used more and more, um, the trust levels sort of rise. Um, but additionally, as people actually post projects onto building profiles, um, there's a verification methodology that you can see here where um, the owner of this building, 86 to 88 Clerkenwell Road, um, they haven't actually claimed that building yet. When they do claim that building, if they do claim that building, they will see this project from Borough Apple attached to it. They will then have the choice to say, yes, this project happened, we're happy with what it says, or no, this hasn't happened, or I want to just message these guys, Borough, and talk to them about what they said and maybe soften a couple things. Um, maybe we don't want it to say that the project value is 10 million pounds. Um, so there are all those levels of verification. Um, in terms of researching the market to figure out pricing, um, that's another sort of really, really opaque space that our system, we think, is going to slowly help shed some light on. Um, but the fact that these guys put that this was a 10 million pound project, that's completely voluntary. They don't have to put that. Um, so it's kind of up for the market to sort of evolve in that way. Um, where we really sit in this whole HB match um, sort of system is, is we provide introductions and we end up stepping away from the deal based on relevant project experience. Um, we're not getting involved in the negotiation of the pricing. That's for the service providers to decide. Um, but hopefully, o over time, you know, systems like this will help bring a little bit more stability to the market. Because that's another reason people don't move forward with projects is they get 16 bids and ranging hundreds of thousands of pounds, and it's impossible to make a buying decision. Okay, Nick, you've just finished exactly at eight o'clock, uh, which means we've got about uh, 20 minutes for 15, 20 minutes for a break for drinks. But before that, I'd like you guys to just like. Yeah. Yes, again. Thank you.